Hello folks, how are we all? And look at this. Matt, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't I can't see anything. Good stuff. Um but I can see you. I can hear oh there we are. There look. we are. And once again your video has gone tiny and I don't know why this <laughs> keeps happening. And people are just gonna start thinking I'm power tripping and making you tiny. But I'm not, I promise you, it's just some sort of bug. A ghost in the machine, possibly a metaphor for <laughs> good evening. There we are, look. There we go. I'm big again. Partridge quote. All right, so uh, Matt, we are today talking about On the Bubble, uh, yep. which seems weird today because there's been an awful lot of chat about another beer, which we'll talk about later as well. Yeah, but exciting. Lots of good news. For the time being, it's on the bubble. So hopefully uh, people are with us and hopefully people have got a can with them and uh, can drink along with us while we tell you a little bit about it. Uh, we, at the moment, don't have Andy on the chat to answer questions live. So we'll try and pick some of out uh, as we go. So if anyone has any questions, then um, do let us know. Hopefully the sound's all good today. Uh, so Matt, talk us through what we're doing today. Pour in, drink in. Yeah, so we're um, on the bubble. Um, we're going to be talking about that, drinking it, telling you a little bit about it, um, about the the artwork, the beer itself, uh, while we brewed it, um, a little bit of the thought process behind um, by the brew team and kind of why that why they why they brewed a beer that's um, not probably the most not popular beer. You know, some people might. It's not a beer that mm. people really fell in love with, but so it's definitely a beer that we all fell in love with at the brewery. So yeah, we did because uh, this is our fifth brew IPA, and I I don't mm. actually think we we made a bad IPA. So, uh, brew IPA, sorry, Sabrage was lovely, Cuve Brew was really nice, uh, Hop Fizz and Brew Romance was the other one. But um, we've been absolutely really loving the style, that sort of dryness, but with the big fruity notes. Big big fan. Anyway, right, mm. let's grab a beer. Uh, down by my side in a makeshift cool box. Yeah, same as I've got to <laughs> just hold it up so you guys. Here we go. I mean, you all guys can all can see it anyway, can't you? Because you're uh, too dark. you're drinking Mine's it. Too dark. But... Let's see if we get some light. <laughs> Here we go. On the bubble, uh, which uses the Yulu backdrop, uh, which is the obviously all of our cool beers have a big crop that's about the size of the can, and that's about the size of the crop. Let's get it in focus. Can crop. So we crop out that artwork to use for other cans. Uh, come on now. I love Brew IPA. Sabrage was brilliant. Sabrage was brilliant. I think it was the first beer we used Sabro in. Uh, and I remember taking a photo of that with all the Sapyard guys just sort of around it because right. it was such a beautiful beer. And like the Sabro was the first time we'd used it and just everyone fell in love immediately with that aroma. All right. So let's give this a pour, Matt. I think you've already beaten me to that, haven't you? Oh, I cracked it, but I thought I was jumping the gun a bit. So, um, but that's just me, isn't it? Really? Here we are. Oh. Um, that. It's a really lovely pale colour. Uh, I don't know, straw sort of straw pale. Would you describe that as? Yeah, it's a. It's got a bit. I haven't really held it up to the light, so um, it's got a bit of haze to it, mm. um, which is a nice bit of haze. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's like a pale straw. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, lovely colour and um, first impressions, kind of on the nose as well. First impressions on the like nose. Sweets. It's again that sabro. Sweets. It's just sabro <laughs> is a huge, just a ro like the hop for aroma. If you want aroma, use sabro, and it's oh straight away as soon as you open it, it's the whole room just smells with the aroma of that. It's lovely, isn't it? It's kind of reminiscent of those fruit salad sweets you used to have as kids. Or well, you might still have them. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I uh, have but them as kids, but yeah, it is, uh, it is glorious. Absolutely love that. Uh, and we'll talk a bit more about the hops in a moment. Oh, it's such a so, beautiful, fresh smell. I love it. Yeah. Mm. So hopefully you guys have all got your fruit IPA in a glass and if you could see some of your first impressions on the chat, um, we'll try and pick up them as we go along. Um, but Tim, should we start back to where we started in the last one? Um, kind of how to how to taste beer, I guess, and you know the different characteristics of what of, of beer. Yeah, sure. So we went into this a little bit last time, um, 
and it always fascinates me with sort of beer tasting because uh, you can go out with you and me could sit across each other in a pub and both have the same beer and both get different things from it, different likes, dislikes, notes, flavors, etc. Uh, also, if you've had something for dinner or haven't eaten, that can affect you. Just your environment, or even just sort of genetics as well. We are all gen- genetically different, so we we experience beer in a different way. Uh, we're obviously then looking at um, typical describers for beers, so the sort of light malts with toasted bread, biscuits, biscotti, things like that, uh, and then caramel malts, butterscotch, burnt sugar, toffee, sweet bread, etc. Uh, that's sweet bread, not sweet breads, which is something different. Uh, and then darker roasted malts, toasted nuts, burnt toast, uh, things like that, coffee, chocolate, etc. Uh, so malt bill here, should we talk about that first or should we go into that in a bit? Yeah, so uh, yeah, in the case of uh, on the bubble, the malts, <clears throat> the malts are there to kind of create a low low colour. Mm. Um, so that's really what the malts are bringing. Um, so the malts that we use, um, remind me, Tim, <laughs> I had a bit of a mind blank there. Uh, we used uh, rice... Uh, torrified rice in the mash. Yeah. And uh, I think it was... Oh, low, yeah, the Maris, wasn't yes. it? There was a low-colour Maris. Yes, low-colour Maris and, and torrified rice. Uh, That's it. And some and some rice hauls as well, just to kind of help with the stuck mash. Correct. Uh, if, if that if that came, came about. So this was so, a reverse step mash. And neither hmm. you or me are uh, pro-brewers. Uh, but we sat down with Sean to talk about this. It was a bit of a different technique, uh, which we sort of learned about the other day, funnily enough, but basically starts with a super high or, or a higher than normal temperature mash, uh, which essentially helps the rice to break down, uh, and that's the sort of low 70s uh, temperature-wise. Torrified rice, all the flaked rice goes in at that point, which kind of looks like flaked oats, um, then you come in with the uh, the low colour maris on top of that, uh, and the temperature's brought down to sort of mid 60s, uh, which is about the normal temperature. And then lots of cold water is added to bring the temperature down further, and that stops any of the enzyme that goes in after that um, denaturing. Uh, and in, right. enzymes are the important thing here, isn't it? Because we're looking at a, a really fermentable beer. So tell, tell me a bit more about that, Matt. Right, so yeah, so in the case of, you know, we've spoken about the malts and what they add to the beer, but in the case of <clears throat> on the bubble, the the kind of the malt beer was really to kind of create that really fermentable base. Right. Um, so the reason we want that really fermentable base is because, you know, it's a brew IPA. Um, so it's a style of beer, uh, it's, it's fairly new, it's only been around a couple of years, but the mm-hmm. idea is kind of the guy that created it in San Francisco, I believe, mm-hmm. was... Yeah. Is, is brute, you know, just like, <clears throat> you know, the, the word the word brute in wine, it's, it's dry. So the idea is that you ferment it all the way out, uh, leave no sugars to give it that dry kind of finish. Um, Why is it that you, do that, that you want to f- uh, ferment a beer sort of all the way out, all the way down, as you say? Yeah, so normally you wouldn't. Um, obviously, normally there's some residual sugars. If you're looking at kind of your New England style IPAs, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of kind of unfermented sugar in there. It gives it that sweet kind of thick, uh, creamy base. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas this obviously is a bit, you know, it's it's thinner, it's drier, still got a nice bit of body um, to it. And and so what mm-hmm. the, so the base is there to do that, get lots of sugars in that can be fermented. Uh, but also, as you mentioned, uh, we put, um, an enzyme in there to also to help it um, ferment all the way down. Mm. Um, and you spoke to Sean about the kind of enzyme that we use, so you, you could probably tell us a little bit about that. I can try to. Uh, so we use an enzyme <laughs> called amyloglucose a days. No, hang on, hang on. It's quite a long word. <laughs> amyloglucose days. Amyloglucose nice. days. There we go. Uh, so that just basically uh, removes all the sugars, just eats away on that. In the same way that we would use an enzyme to uh, create Futurist, one of our gluten-free beers, um, this essentially just unlocks all the complex sugars, breaks them down into really easily fermentable sugars, uh, and that's what dries it out because it takes all that sort of dry uh, sugars out of it. It's essentially the right. correct key for a lock, if you will, that enzyme, as far as sugars right. go. So it's a really cool... 
like twist on an IPA is something completely different. Um, obviously, we've you guys have had lots of IPAs before. You'll notice this is completely different uh, in terms of kind of mouthfeel and you know that dryness and sweetness. Um, but that's not to say that it hasn't got any flavour. Um, and we've spoken about how you use malts to give flavour and that there's not a lot uh, in here in malt wise to give it flavour. So um, we'll, we'll talk about where the flavour comes from. But um, so let's let's taste a beer and, and see what we you get. What, it's, it's the dryness for me that wins it because if that's just a standard IPA with those with that hot profile, that's glorious. It's fruity it's fresh it's nice it's got a good carbonation it's got a soft mouth feel but it's that dryness at the end of the at the end that, that just sort of you just kind of want to go back in for more like when you're drinking a really good wine you just kind of go oh yeah i want some more or put some more it's really dangerous you get kind of it's wine characteristics but not wine character if you know what i mean and I love that. I think it's great. I've lost you. Can't hear you, Matt. There oh, you go. is that yeah. better? I think I, <laughs> I unmuted my microphone. Yeah, I was just—I was saying, you know, like a, a brute IPA is essentially as close as you can get to a wine, and you know, yeah. and still be a beer. Yeah. Um. So, uh, so that uh, mash when we've put in the cold water uh, and we added that enzyme, which I'm not going to pronounce again. Uh, go and look it up if you want. We actually added fructose as well, a very low quantity, uh, which again is very fermentable. And that adds that sort of fruit sweetness, that's fruit sugars. Uh, we got some comments here as well. So lovely beer, the dry, uh, the carbonation and dry finish makes it a tropical carver. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, never yeah, tried this style before. Really interesting and glad I got to uh, case to try, not just the one can. Good lad, yeah, I like that. Dry nice. and then Sabro hit. I agree with that as well. It's, it's the Sabro that, it's, uh, I, for me, it's just all I get and I love it. Yeah, so what's the, what, what kind of flavours are you getting from it then, Tim? What's the kind of the, the Sabro or, or the other hops, what they're giving you? Do you know what? The other day, uh, Sean uh, Head Brewer was talking about coconut. And at the time, I couldn't find coconut at all. Uh, as I said, we all taste mm. differently. Whereas he was sort of yeah. saying, you know, a lot of coconut, nearly did his accent then. Uh, all I was getting was grapefruit, uh, a lot of grapefruit. And I think as it sort of sat for a few days, just chilled maybe, mm, I am getting a little bit more gentle sort of almost creamy coconut, but mm. also a real candy sweetness. That sort of almost, uh, oh, I don't quite know how to describe it, but almost like a candy floss sweetness, but with a sort of, grapefruit fruity undertone and i really love it nice i mean it's, it's quite complex and there is mm. you know quite a few hops in here so that that coconut you're most likely getting from the sabro yeah um but i, I yeah. get kind of a lot of pineapple too yeah. some grapefruit not quite as much as as you're getting but you know i'm, I'm getting that grapefruit and that kind of bitterness i'm getting less grapefruit than i was the other day um but that's the great thing about beers they, they sort of you know they develop and change also i've just eaten as well and that will have changed it from what, right. I, from what I ate the other day. So, um, But I think I actually prefer it as it is now, which is funny because what I've eaten is exactly what I was going to suggest to bear with this beer. So. <laughs> um, quickly on the questions, just seeing, um, do you use a special yeast? Uh, we actually use the same yeast. I mean, we use the same yeast for the, pretty much all our beers, um, apart from some specials. So this is just our house for Mont yeast. White tips, use um, different yeast. So the 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 obviously the yeast is you know giving all the kind of the flavours mm. uh, as well, um, but the reason that it gets dry again, you know, and the reason why this is so different is as we said, it's those uh, those enzymes that kind of that help it along. Mm. So it's the same yeast as that, that we normally use, the house one. Rachel Williams just says uh, lots of grapefruit here, definitely dangerously refreshing, uh, and I agree with that. Uh, and Super refreshing, yeah. Tori said, uh, I always get confused when I taste coconut with beers using Sabro until I realise it's the Sabro. Um, and yeah, you're right, because coconut, you wouldn't think... I mean, I think of coconut, I think of a bounty bar or something like that. I, it's uh, a... Yeah, do, beautiful. It is a flavour that you find. Mm. So, uh, hop-wise, we've talked a lot about Sabro. Um, in the Whirlpool, we had Sabro, Citra and Chinook. 
Uh, and Sabra obviously bringing all those tropical flavours and that aroma. And then we had three, I think we could use the term supermassive dry hops, which you, uh, Andy's used just now to describe another <laughs> bit. Uh, and I'm going to love it. Uh, so we used three big dry hops. Again, Sabro, Sitcha, Chinook, and Azaka as well, which is a bit of a brewery favourite at the moment. Um, it is. It is one of the brewery favourites. Uh, we also use a another adjunct we in did. this, uh, we which did. is a bit of a bit of an odd one. I mean, it, it seems it. You know, we mm. use it quite a lot, and we've used it in a few of our beers before. Mm. Um, but that's that's oak, yeah, right? Oak, correct. Um, not. I don't think everyone has quite the ability that we do. Actually, we're particularly lucky uh, to have our spinbot, which is an amazing piece of equipment. Uh, essentially. Matt, you, you tell us about the spin bot. Yeah, so I mean, we've introduced the spin bot a couple of times on a few blogs, so some of you might already know this, but we'll kind of we'll go over it just kind of quickly. So a spin bot is a bit of equipment. Um, every brewery has something like it, but um, you know every brewery, every brewery has its own unique kind of uh, piece of equipment. But essentially, it's uh, with adjuncts you can put them in the beer, so you'll you'll chuck them uh, in the beer while it's fermenting mm. or, or you know or, or whatever you or any stage you want but the spin bot uh, is something that essentially you'll put the adjuncts in this bit of equipment and it will push the beer through mm. it um, and this will constantly like whirl the beer through this uh, through this bit here and the reason that we use it the reason that, like by recirculating this beer through this um, is that the, the contact time with the adjuncts is constant mm. if you if you drop some stuff in a beer it's going to sink to the bottom float to the top and it will just contact with that bit of beer around it by by using a spin bot uh it's every single ounce of the beer is in contact um with with this with the adjunct so we we chuck the oak in the spin bot and i think it's going for about five days wasn't it tim mm. it does and to describe that spin bot it's probably about sort of this wide and you can't see that particularly on the video but maybe like a, a big arms width wide uh and it's quite tall it's uh you have to climb a ladder to get to the top and essentially when you say put the oaks the oak in it's oak spirals um they are just dropped in the top on mass and then the beer goes from the fv into the top of the spin bot spins round comes to the bottom goes back to the fv and just repeat for five days, just constantly doing that for five days. And that way, it just gets so much flavour. And we use that for herbs, coffee, fruits, uh, various other things in various beers. So it's a very clever bit of kit. And when you come and do a brewery tour, you, you'll get shown that and talked about that. You'll get to see it. Yeah, just going back to a question from the Deadlock Skate Room. Apologies, we've missed this, what makes it a brew. Uh, so just going back a little bit. Um, it's we use uh, enzyme particularly to ferment all the sugars out, so it makes it super dry. Just dries it all out. Um, so it's, it's brut as in you know uh, as in a champagne or something like yeah. that. So that's that's where the term brut IPA comes from. So there's no residual sugars. It's it's you know it's it's just just yeah. dry, beery goodness. Couple more comments there. Delicate coconut undertaste for me, but a slight creamy taste feel, uh, mouth feel and taste too, which are very. I'm going to shut my window because my door keeps sounding like the cat's trying to break in. It's not. It's just the wind. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. Your house, Vermont yeast, has a lot to answer for. <laughs> it does give siren beers their trademark yeah. aroma. I'll get with that. Uh, I know what the spinball is, but it always makes me think of something out of Robots. <laughs> <laughs> Entering Brilliant. the spinbot. <laughs> <laughs> I just reminds me of Craig Charles now. I could just picture Craig Charles. Absolutely love that. <laughs> we should definitely just repurpose this bin bot into a <laughs> into a robot. I'll, we'll, we'll pitch it to Andy on Monday. See if we can have Team Siren at that. Is, is the robot was did a thing? I <laughs> uh, so if you want to find out more about the spin bot, see some photos, then head to sirencraftbrew.com forward slash spin bot, uh, which is S P I N B O T. Uh, and there's a brew, uh, there's a blog there. Sorry that we did a, a few months ago. Um, so, right, let's talk about the oak then, because I think a lot of people, when they think of oak and a beer, you're going to think barrel-aged. And obviously this has absolutely no barrel-aged uh, 
you know, mm. flavors. The barrel aged flavors, you're really getting the spirits or whatever the whatever was in the barrel before. Um, so, what what are we getting here? What's the flavor notes that oak is bringing to this for you? Um, I mean, I guess you, people could say, you know, what what's the point in oak? You know, it's a bit of a weird thing to put in. I think. You know, all brewers, no matter how uh, experienced they are, still like to experiment. And I think for for Sean and the team, uh, brewing a beer that's so close in comparison to to wine, uh, and wine's obviously aged in oak, mm. uh, they wanted to kind of give it a go and just see what see what he brought to mm. it. Um, and it it does add a bit of dryness. You kind of get a bit of woody dryness, mm-hmm. but also kind of a bit of sweetness. It's, it's you know you, you're getting getting sweetness and a flavour from the from the um, all the hops, but this adds uh, kind of a slightly different bit of sweetness and a bit a bit of tannin as well. Adds kind of a, another element to the dryness, I guess. Yeah, I, I was surprised at uh I thought it was going to bring a really, I don't know, like an oaky flavour, I guess, but I don't think it does. I think if you're thinking that you're wrong, it, it will just bring us a, a sweetness. And I was not expecting wood to bring yeah. sweetness, but that's why brewers are brewers and that's why I take photos of things because I couldn't have thought that through. And, <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. I love it. We just drink and talk about the, t- uh, the beer oh, no. team. We're not, you know, we're not, <laughs> we won't be trusted in there. Can you imagine if we swap roles for a day? Uh, it would be pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty bad. All right. So, um, should we have a look at food pairings? What we're talking about food pairings? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hang on, Tori's just said, I didn't assume there'd be oaky flavours as well, so I was surprised, pleasantly. Uh, and yeah, I, de- I definitely agree with that. I think you hear oak and you just think, I don't know what you think you're going to taste, but I, I, you mm. think you're going to taste biting into a piece of wood or something, and you don't get that at all. You just get a really, I don't know, it kind of balances it. I think it helps push the sweetness and the fruitiness, which is probably why I get those more candy notes. Yeah, definitely. It's it, it's a it's kind of an odd one, but it definitely brings something um, to the to the beer, and I'm kind of glad they used yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so food pairing wise, uh, Matt, I've literally just had a Caesar salad, uh, and nice. I'm a vegetarian, so it was sort of fake chicken. Uh, we had some toasted uh, olive bread. To, which made sort of croutons and then the parmesan obviously and then the really nice Caesar dressing I've still got that flavour in my mouth and I think Sounds that's good. why this beer has changed flavour for, for me to what it is now into the more coconutty creamy notes than the other day where mm. it was more the hyper candy grapefruit notes and I'm really into that so that I'm going to say if you're drinking this beer grab yourself a, a Caesar salad either a chicken Caesar salad or or uh, obviously a vegetarian Caesar salad, but for me, that Caesar dressing has, I've still got the taste in my mouth, but it's its balancing so well with the fruit in it. Uh, we had some avocado in there, which is which is sort of adding to that cream nice. nature, but the yeah. saltiness of the, the slithers of cheese uh, combined with the sort of that sweet notes in the beer. I wish I'd opened the beer earlier and I had it with my dinner if I'm honest with you because I think it would have really helped but those yeah. flavours still in my mouth I very nearly went and sort of had a drink or uh, just washed my mouth or brushed my teeth or something I thought no I'm not I really want to leave these flavours to work with this beer and just lingering yeah, it really works so I'm really into that so that's that's real world pairing that nice that sounds beautiful especially you know you kind of Enjoying this beer out in the sun with a nice kind of light salad seems to pair. You well, know, I, it sounds like I brilliant. I would have enjoyed out in the sun, but <clears> instead <throat> I was setting up for a live tasting with the curtains closed. <laughs> yeah, fun times. <laughs> uh, so we've got a comment from Sam here saying that dinner sounds incredible, making me hungry. Sam, you're welcome around any time, as long as it's legal. Uh, and <laughs> Rachel said something creamy, fatty would work well for sure i'm not sure if i'm being called fatty like something creamy fatty uh, <laughs> rachel's uh rachel's a good friend of mine and she definitely knows her beer and food pairing so um so uh, whatever rachel says um, nice, is you're definitely onto a, a winner nice there cheese platter. yeah 100 percent as well i think you get those sort of fruity notes that cheese and fruit work so well for me so, all right where, where are you going with this matt um so i've kind of put two things down because you know you know i'm a snacker um, I do love to 
kind of snack on food. Um, so for, if I was having a main, um, I kind of like to contrast my food with beer. Mm-hmm. So because I'm getting that kind of coconut, coconut kind of feel, um, I put down some like coconut crusted red snapper with like a pineapple salsa. Oh my goodness me. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's a bit fancy, isn't it? Um, I don't know if I'm skilled enough to kind of pull that off, but kind of it, it marries the coconut and the pineapple flavours you're getting from, from the beer, um, from the sabro um, and the pineapple notes from the other hops. Um, obviously being kind of quite light as well and like kind of like a fish because um, this beer reminds me of like a white wine. Um, so it kind of really complements it. Um, you put some lime in there to kind of a bit of acidity to balance it out. Um, comment there, Matt. First comment but, just saying, ooh, posh. <laughs> I'm agreeing with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Coconut crusted yeah. red snapper with pineapple salsa. That is not a combo you're finding on a Weatherspoons, is it? <laughs> it's definitely not, no. Um, but am I really that posh? So I actually, uh, I actually, we're doing a live tasting, but here's a live uh, beer and food pairing for no you. No way. I am um, actually, uh, can I get it in there? So I made some guacamole. Um so again, as yeah, as you said, um, kind of the fattiness um, from the from the <coughs> avocado kind of matches. Um, and you've got this fresh, um, there's some lime in there, some chilies. Yeah, that works. Um, it's all kind of balanced. So let's well, shall we see how it goes. Rachel, I think. she said something creamy slash fatty. I mean, you've nailed that with avocado. It's like to be honest with you, it's kind of like we were. You know, on the same same way. Yeah, right. I can't believe you've got live food pairing. This is amazing. I noticed that's mm. a bit more of a chunky avocado. Uh, sorry, chunky guacamole. I I think I prefer a bit more of a a mashed up avo with maybe a bit of tomato, maybe a bit of yeah lime, bit of spice maybe. But that's quite chunky. What's uh, is that your vibe? I'll let you eat. <laughs> oh yeah, that works so well. Mm. Um, if I do say so myself, um, it's quite fatty and rich and creamy. And then, you know, you have a sip of that beer and it just cleanses your palate right nice. away. Um, yeah, I do like a, I do like a chunky. I also only had five minutes from, um, getting back from work and doing everything else. So, um, <clears throat> I probably, it's probably a bit chunky than I normally would go, but mm, fair play. <laughs> you've been rushed into it. No, it looks good. Uh, all right. So, um, Got a comment here saying nibbling on garlic stuffed olives. Yes, Manchego. This sounds very Waitrose. Air dried chorizo thins, and it's going brilliantly. Tanning go well with the fats and the cheese and the chorizo. Absolutely agree with that. Yeah, that's all going to work. Yeah. Mm. Big f- Sorry, I'm still reeling over my uh, guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good if I do say so myself. <laughs> Guacamole's all gone for it. Oh, I love that. Mm. All right. Well, Matt, that dinner is top Tim's. I can't believe that. That's outrageous. Come round. I'm screenshotting that. That screenshot, that's going up in the office. I don't. One nil. Me and Matt have got a bit of an ongoing <laughs> thing. With who's the better cook and who making, who's making better dinners? Uh, I think you're the better cook, and I'm just, I just seem to have the logistics now down. Together, we would just be unstoppable. No, I'm Tim. just more arrogant. <laughs> more narcissistic. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, that's on the bubble. Uh, I finished mine. I don't know about you. Very, I'm not far off. Very much enjoyed it. Uh, it's available on the website now. Uh, websites are uh, sorry. Websites. Uh, orders are flooding into the website. So do get it while you can because it is really, really delicious. Beautiful purple can. Let's try and get some light on that. Sorry, light's really struggling in this room today. Lovely beer, really drinkable. Uh, and if you've heard bad things about Brute IPAs or had a few bad Brute IPAs, trust us, go and try some more. They're a really lovely thing. And I, I think uh, it's a tragedy yeah, that they're not more appreciated, I think, because I'm big fan, big fan. So there is some other stuff to mention today, Matt. Uh, yeah. Something happened earlier. What's been going on? What's happening, Tim? I... <laughs> <laughs> what's, I, ha- what's been going on that's been taking up our lives for a, a fairly long time <laughs> my entire life for a good <laughs> for a good uh for a good few weeks uh has been dominated with lumina which is our hey. brand new flagship beer we now have five flagship cans 
And right in the middle of that is Lumina, the Session IPA, and it is fantastic. Look at that. Here we go. We have a three M. We have a can of Lumina and we have a glass of Lumina. So while we're pouring this out, uh, I'm just going to play you a little video from Darren, uh, which he filmed yesterday, and this is classic Darren. Check it out. I'm sure that uh, following all our cryptic clues over the last couple of weeks by now, you're fully aware that we've launched a new siren into our, into our range, uh, Lumina. This has been a long time coming. We felt there's been a gap in, in our uh, range of sirens for a long time. And uh, I'm sure that you're gonna love the artwork, uh, the story behind it, but most importantly, you're gonna love the beer when you get to drink it. Great stuff, Darren. Love that. Here we go, and I love this. I don't know if you can see the detail. I'm going to shine my phone torch on this, which is our new Lumina glass. It's so good, isn't it? Like a little can glass. I love it. It's such a thick glass. It's lovely. It's great to drink beer from as well. Love it. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Andy said, can't wait to see what Kevin McLeod does with the barrel store. Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, Matt, we're not going to go massively into detail about Lumina today. Um, but we are going to tell you, obviously, that it's new, it's here, and it's our beauty. We're absolutely loving it. Uh, over the last few weeks, I've been taking Luminous home. Not a few weeks, a few, probably a week or so since they started canning and just having to research, drinking them in the garden, in the sun. It's been tough. It's been really tough for me, Matt. I can imagine. I, know, I can imagine. But I've, I've made you I feel for you. <laughs> it's been wonderful. Um, so, Lumina again, it's been a long time coming. Huge story behind it as ever. It's, this is never just a case of, let's create a new beer. Uh, I know the team, Darren and Andy, started long before I even got involved with the original concepts, the names, everything that's been going on. The design has gone through so many different sort of iterations just to work on it to make it absolutely perfect. All the while, the beer in the brewery is being perfected as well. And what a great beer it is. It's a great beer and it's a great design, that sort of energy theme as well. And I promise you, it's, uh, having been testing this, it is that it's a, it's a session beer. It's something you can just grab one from the fridge, grab one from the fridge. Yeah, like um, you say, there was that maybe that gap in you know, our core range. So this is obviously joined the family and um, Soundwave has been obviously long one of my favourite IPAs. But uh, if you're sitting down and watching the football, maybe even you're doing a Super Sunday and watching all three games, um, it's a bit punchy, <laughs> to say the least. Many a Soundwave hangover has been had over the years, um, but but this kind of sits there, doesn't it? You know, it's got bags of flavour, but it's it's I super sessionable. I mean, as someone that regularly drinks Siren, obviously you're right about Soundwave bloody love Soundwave and I would drink a lot of Soundwave but you know if you're on an all dayer watching a football lot, like you say it's probably a bit punchy Santo maybe 5% great beer great flavour I've been drinking a lot of suspended and cans but that will be back on bars excuse me uh, but this is <clears throat> this is where it's at it's, it's such mm. a beautiful beer and for 4.2% a big aroma is a huge hot profile in there and oh, it's a great big flavour of fruit as well. So we will come back and we'll do a full tasting on that as Let's well. Let's see if this goes with guacamole as well. <laughs> While you're <laughs> testing that, I'm going to play another video. And this is of uh, Dr. Becky Smethurst, uh, who we've been working with over the last couple of weeks, uh, or a few weeks actually, uh, months, uh, to help with the Lumina launch. So Lumina is obviously very space themed, uh, very celestial in its design. And we're all big space nerds here at Siren as well. So on July 31st, we're going to be hosting a stargazing night uh, where we're going to look out for the stars. And for that, we are the very first ever brewery to make their own planospheres. I <laughs> don't reckon there will ever be another brewery that has made a planosphere. And if you don't know what a planosphere is, 
you essentially hold it up to the stars like this. You find the right time and date. And then you can see the uh, constellations and where they are in the sky and you can line them up. And I think, just as a person, not as someone who works with Siren, that is really cool. I'm an absolute space nerd and I think that's <clears throat> awesome. So it's, I'm not even a space nerd. I, you know, these... <laughs> got delivered to the office and I was, I was playing one with one for a good half an hour. Oh, that's uh, so cool. And I was out the other night um, when we had a clear sky and I was looking at, I was just lining up and I was like, this is amazing. This takes me right back to my childhood. So happy, so happy. Uh, so yeah, two pound a can for, um, for Lamina, insanely good value for money. That is. Yeah. We're um, not paying Tori um, to, to kind of do PR <laughs> yeah, right. for us, but thanks Tori anyway for the shout out. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, July 31st, um, we're going to be hosting the Stargazing Night and we're going to have a Stargazing box of beers. And this glass is going to be in that Stargazing box of beers. It's the only way to buy it. Uh, and mm. that night, we're going to be hosted by Dr. Becky. So here's Dr. Becky with a little few words. And then we'll be back with something else very quick. Hi, guys. My, my name is Dr. Becky Smethurst and I am an astrophysicist. But I'm also a lover of good craft beer as well. Now, Siren Craft Beer have just launched their new one, Lumino, which is inspired by all things celestial and the light of the stars. Now, for me, there is no better way to spend an evening than stargazing with a can of beer in one hand. So Siren are also going to be hosting a virtual stargazing event on the 31st of July, where I'll be giving you tips and tricks on the best ways to enjoy the night sky and we'll be tasting Lumina as well. So for more, www.sirencraftbrew.com. Great stuff. Thank you, Dr. Becky. Exciting times to come, I think, Matt. Yeah, no, that's going to be, you know, I mean, <clears throat> not only is it exciting launching a new beer and having such a, a beautiful beer in our lives, but um, that sounds like it's going to be great fun, especially with, you know, um, someone like Dr. Becky kind mm. of uh, guiding us. Yeah, she's, uh, she's that, super interesting, super just so interesting to listen to and to, you know, hear her talk about as well. So it's, she's really knowledgeable about stuff. Uh, she's an astrophysicist, so it's going to be great. Um, so some people might say it's stupid to launch a new beer during a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do they know, Tim? Yeah, exactly. Um, we have had a series of bars that have been... Uh, on the, and bottle shops that have worked with us to get this beer out today, which has been great. Um, it would be stupid to launch a new core cool beer uh, during a pandemic, but it would be really stupid, wouldn't it, to launch another beer on the same day as you're doing that? I mean, wait, don't we love a challenge? We do. We do love <laughs> a challenge. So, uh, oh, man, talking of challenges, keeping you mm. the right size on this screen, young Matthew. Goodness me. <laughs> Say young Matthew, but you look like an old football manager. <laughs> Some people do say I look like a, a new new Espirito Santo. <laughs> so here I'm we saying are. I'm Some people, it's just you and Andy, but there <laughs> we are. <laughs> so here we are. So not only have we released uh, Lumina today, which is obviously going to be there forever, um, we've also just put out this beautiful IPA, which is called I Left My Wallet in El Dorado, which again, for those in the know, is a, a Tribe Called Quest uh, kickback. We obviously had a Tribe Called Zest, and now we've got Left My Wallet in El Dorado, which is a nod to us all. Oh, my God, my screen's so black today, isn't it? Look at that. Let's try it. You just <laughs> held it up, didn't you? Why have you got so much light? Here we go. I don't know, just a light, light airy room. Really cool design again. Yeah. And... You've got one there, Matt. I don't know about you, but I'm yep. just going to pour mine out to show these yeah. people what this looks like. Yeah, just going to get onto it. We're not doing a full tasting of this right now. We are just introducing it to you. It dropped on the web shop today, and I just want to tell you about it. Uh, I had one of these so the other day. it's a good day. excuse to drink it. Amen, man. It's Friday night, <laughs> and I've been super stressed out all week. Look at that. That is a beautiful beer. Absolutely mm. beautiful beer. It's got a thick, thick haze. Oh, so Matt, actually, we've mentioned this whilst we've been doing these uh, these talks. It's the same hot profile, excuse me, as every second matters. Yeah, right. So it's you know, 
I guess that's the power of kind of the base of beer. You know, we're using the same hops. Uh, completely different beer, so every like totally different. I don't think it could be any more different, really, if it tried. No, um, absolutely. But <clears throat> reminiscent kind of reminds me of uh, a Zach attack, mm -hmm. um, which you guys might remember, mm -hmm. one of my favourite siren beers. But it, it's similar in profile to that, you know, kind of in mouthfeel, um, kind of that aroma, really punchy, kind of really super hazy. Um, but obviously, it's really gonna, uh, it's really profile in. Uh, El Dorado. So yeah, El Dorado is a hop uh, for those. Uh, it wasn't just a cool name, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but quite there's so much, so much uh, aroma there. It's a hop that uh, our head brewer Sean um, brewed with a while back, and he really wanted to get some in when he came to Siren. He, uh, if you remember, anyone that was joined uh, joined us for our every second master's tasting. Sean really wanted to get it in for every minute matters, but we couldn't get it in time. So unfortunately, it wasn't in every minute matters. It went into every second matters, which, if you remember, was a crystal clear, sort of more of a West Coast approach, a California IPA. And we talked at the time about flavor, um, sorry, water profiles. Um, mm. And the, uh, the, is it the sulfates versus... I can't remember now. I'm blanking. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> you've caught me off guard there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, they're talking about the difference between a West Coast and uh, an East Coast and, um, <clears throat> yeah, the different kind of water composition that gives it that kind of kind of thin, clear versus kind of that thick, hazy um, kind of profile and look. Amen. Uh, so, people, uh, Tories are saying every minute matters, every second matters, two of your favourite IPAs agree. They were so spectacular huge mandarin orange notes uh, and this is the same it's got huge hop flavors again like great big aromas oh but it's it's thick it's dank it's just it's everything you want for an ipa it's an absolute it's uh it's an absolute classic sort of siren ipa yeah what we what we've dubbed tasty ipas um, we have to kind of get around those preconceptions mm. um, of kind of you know east you know west you know uh, go into the beer kind of completely open minded and just yeah just be blown away really I guess yeah absolutely um, <laughs> Rachel does listening to a tribe called Quest enhance the drink uh, it probably does amen I mean listening to a tribe called Quest is always a good idea yeah can't hurt um. yeah amen. <laughs> um, so I'm into that. All right, so that uh, pretty much wraps it up today. I've got sort of two half beers to go outside and, and uh, finish the sun with. Matt, mm. what are you up to for your weekend? Um, it's going to be chilled out after this week, isn't it? I think <laughs> all of the siren office are just going to take two days to <laughs> just get over the week. Well, I think it's going um, uh, it's going to start pretty fresh for you on Monday, Matt, when you come into uh, the amount of orders that we've got today, having launched uh, a new core beer. <laughs> Yeah, I hope everyone uh, that's tuned in has, has put in an order. Uh, well, I, some, I do hope and I don't hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, again, just um, a big thanks to people that have tuned in for your support. Um, we love making beers um, and we're glad that you love drinking them. Mm. Um, and thanks for tuning in and listening to me and Tim talk rubbish while drinking beer. Um, yeah, amen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I mean, um, it's all a bit, you know, lockdown might be ending, so I don't know whether these kind of things are going to continue, but we enjoy doing them. Uh, and mm. it's it's lovely to see that people are watching, and it's nice to know that people are getting something from this and joining in and commenting. Uh, and we it means a lot. It means a lot. And I'll tell you what, we put a lot of work into this, and it means a lot when you guys, you know, buy the beers and comment and share, and I love that. So thank you so much. Really, really thank you. Yeah, cheers, guys. Um, take care, stay safe, have a good weekends, and um, yeah, enjoy the beers. Absolutely. Yeah, check out, uh, don't forget to check out uh, sirencraftbrew.com forward slash spinbot if you want to find out more about that spinbot. Uh, and also sirencraftbrew.com forward slash luminar. It's all about yeah. luminar nowadays. Cheers, chaps, and 